legs haven't fallen off yet. Morning guys, race day morning. Uh, woke up just after six o'clock. I'm uh, gonna head out about eight to uh, get ready for registration and so on. Just come down to where I have my kit laid out and uh, my kids have surprised me. <laughs> oh, look at this. One poster there. <laughs> Another one here. Look. How good is that? <laughs> That's a nice surprise. All right, guys. Uh, about getting towards two K in, I think. Uh, no, two and a bit K. Had to follow the single file crowd for the first one. That was mostly downhill. About six minutes. The second one, I managed to calm it down. About seven. And uh, been walking most of the hills after that. Just because my heart rate went up into the 170s early on. The calves started to feel a bit lactic. So we're uh, walking quite a bit now just to ease into it. done the first big road crossing with assistance from the race director Jamie uh, guided me across nicely and uh, yeah back on the trails I remember from so many times I've been up here heart rate just hit 169 definitely keeping it to a walk on the hills average pace 724 at the moment so that can slide down to 8 and I'll still be <laughs> going faster than I expect to finish uh, nice and easy get this first big climb for the first 10k out of the way and it's not so bad after that it's a good job i know the route <laughs> there's nobody to follow don't know if i'm at the back but <laughs> there's no one for a good distance a bit sloppy right 3.84 kilometers in uh, I forgot to mention that I didn't film much in the, well, anything <laughs> in the area where you get your number from and register. But one guy came up to me and said, uh, he'd been watching my videos and found them useful. So <laughs> that cheered me up. So yeah, I didn't know anyone who was doing the race was actually watching them, but it turns out there's at least one. <laughs> Shoes were clean when I set off. <laughs> Quite a few muddy bits up to now, and I'm sure there's a lot more to come. We had a lot of rain this week, but thankfully I think it's going to be mostly fine today. Got to 5k with a convenient steep hill to walk up. I like my first half a flapjack. Average pace 744 now, so that's good. Honestly, not sure whether I'm last or not. <laughs> I think more people started behind me than have overtaken me, but. Not seen anyone behind me for ages. <laughs> Can just dimly make out a group of runners, or walkers in this case, near the top of this false summit. <laughs> There's plenty more summits after this one. Walked up the rest of that climb towards the woods that lead to Bowl Hill Lane. Heart rate was well into the 170s by the top, even walking with my hands on my knees. So, just walking the flat bit to get to that back down before I start running again. If I do. <laughs> right, just over seven kilometers in, 7.3. Uh, I think the breathing and heart rate's calmed down a bit now. Legs have warmed up a bit, so I feel better than I did a while back, which is what I was hoping for. Finally approaching what I think is the highest point on the route. And the first checkpoint, just before Bellend Lane. There's a guy in front of me who's just a bit quicker, but I don't think he knows the route. He overtook me twice. <laughs> I never went past him, so I've seen him stop and check a couple of times which way he's going. It's the only reason I'm keeping him in sight. Right, just trekking up Bellin Lane. That was the first checkpoint. Got helped across the busy road there, and I uh, got my bottle that I've been drinking the electrolyte mix out of. Topped up with water, dropped another tablet in it. I think I'm good to go. I jokingly told him I think everyone else is behind me. 
I think he just thought I was daft. <laughs> just approaching the chimney up on Stanage. My pacer just disappearing around the corner. Right, onto Dennis's lane now. <laughs> Could be here for a while. Let's climb up the up bit before we get to trip down the down bit. Right, I've done 14 kilometers in about two hours. So roughly a quarter of the way round, which would give me a eight hour finish time if I kept that up. We'll see. <laughs> Nice cool breeze. Fairly sure you could wring the back of my t-shirt out and get a good drink out of it. If you like drinking that sort of thing. So glad I don't have to think about navigation. I haven't done so far. Because uh, to be lost and tired, <laughs> that'd be a double whammy. Right, more than 10 miles in. Let's cross this busy road with the help of the marshals. I had a chat with the guy who was accidentally pacing me, another person called Mark, so that was easy to remember. 17k done, so that's good, almost a third of the way round. Two hours 25. I think Mark's goal is a bit faster than mine, about seven and a half compared to my eight, so he's gone off ahead again. But we have got a bunch of people just in front of him who are in sight now, which is unusual. I just bumped into a runner coming the other way. Asked if I was Mark, he recognised me. And said it was Simon who follows me on Strava, so that was really cool. Gave me a handshake and wished me good luck. And I'm still going up the never ending frizzle lane at the moment. Right, almost 20k in now. On the way towards where Lineker Reservoirs are. Uh, legs are a bit heavier than they were. <laughs> Right hamstring feels a little bit funny, but I uh, got that on my last run, long run, it didn't turn into anything, so keep plodding on. Just have to keep reminding myself to run, even when I've just got to the top of a hill. My legs don't feel like moving again. Made it to Lineker. Just got to drop down through the woods. Still got the plan in mind of trying to get to 25k, feeling like I'm fresh enough to do a 28k long run. <laughs> I'm not sure at the moment. Right, about half marathon done in about three hours. <laughs> uh, had a few spells where everything feels heavy, but it fluctuates, so uh, not the end of the world. Well, the sun started to come out just on the outskirts of Barlow at the moment. Starting to question my life choices at certain points. Oh man, just keep going. 23k in. Don't want to alarm anyone, but I'm now at the point where I've run the furthest I've ever run in my life. And I'm only just over halfway around. <laughs> 27 and a half K in. Average pace 850 minutes per kilometer. So if I keep it under nine, that'll get me in in eight hours. There's been a good stretch of uphill <laughs> from the start really. One or two downhill bits to run, which I made the most of. I'm hoping that it's going to be more down than up soon. Up this steep road now. Uh, 
30 kilometers in. <laughs> it's hard work. I did bounce back from everything feeling heavy, but I'm starting to uh, get back there again now. See its ups and downs. Just walking up towards the miner's arms at Humble. Average pace has dropped to 8.53 per kilometre. 30.48 kilometres in. Trying to run the downhills and some of the flats. It's got a bit of a twinge from my left hip, but it's one of those weird passing ones that you get now and again, I think. Definitely more downhill than up now with <laughs> with peaks. I think not to say there aren't plenty of undulations but yeah it's nice to have got past all that lot 32k done so that's my first ever 20 miler 33.3 km just dropping down the hill towards the canal right heading towards the canal now 34k done my legs feel like they've been hit with a thousand hammers. Apart from that, it's all going well. Okay, keep moving, keep eating. That's the mantra at the moment. It's so hard to run at the moment. My legs feel really sore. But I can't walk the rest of it. Or uh, I won't get a medal. Ridiculous. Right, it's checkpoint five done. Uh, checkpoint six will be the final one. <laughs> Trying to make it sound like I'm nearly there. Always a nice view from over here as we head towards the Westwood. Just leaving Brimington. Average pace has just gone over nine minutes per kilometre, so touch and go with the eight hour goal. Oh, there's the aerial treat. Doing some good aerialing. Right, just about to enter the woods, which will uh, be really muddy. It'll lead me down into the bottom of a valley, and I'll have to climb up the other side. <laughs> Fun times. think of anything to say at this point. Not me. Oh, I saw a squirrel. And my legs haven't fallen off yet. So there's some good news. Okay I'm on the Trans Pennine Trail bit. So glad I wrecked this recently. I know where I'm going. Uh, when we get to the bridge pace is at 9.07 per kilometre so uh, yeah if it gets to 10 that's kind of very close to missing the cutoff so thankfully I'm almost at 40k so I can't bring the average down too much and a few walking breaks this nice smooth terrain keeps tempting me to run a bit but after a few metres I soon realise that it's even just a gentle upstroke, uphill, rather, up slope, I was trying to say. It's a bit much at the moment. Legs are wrecked. I don't think they get any, any more wrecked. Well, not noticeably. Uh, but, yeah, 90% wrecked, so they don't need to get much more. I feel like I need some positivity. What's positive? I've done 40k. It's uh, 14k more than I've ever done before. Still moving. <laughs> sun's out. I've not put my shades on yet. The sun's been behind me most of the time, so I've just been wearing them for decoration again, but hey ho. <sighs> I think there are some downhill sections to come. 
as well as some more pills. And when I get back, I can just rest. I'm as surprised as anyone. <laughs> I'm running. <laughs> it's fairly flat now. I'm breaking it into 5k chunks because I eat every 5k. So when I get to 45, there will only be 8k left. Well, that's a positive thought. 40.68 now. Past 42k, so heading towards my first ever marathon. Looks like being about 6 hours 25 or so. <laughs> Gotta start somewhere. Someone seems to have rolled out the brown carpet for us on this bit. Right, checkpoint six is done now. That's the last one. They had some food there, but I decided just to stick with what I brought with me and what I'm used to. Didn't even have any Coke. May have been an option, but never tried it on a run before, so just got to climb up this Sutton Scarsdale Hall now. I'm gonna to put it on top of a big hill. Still climbing up towards the hall sometime later. Near the M1 in the distance, as always. I think once I get past the hall into Sutton Scarsdale itself, then I see the sign that says one mile to Heath. And Heath is one of the neighbouring villages to where I live, so it'll feel like I'm on home turf at that point. And hopefully nearly done. Finally at the top of that hill. Absolutely trashed. Hello Paul. I won't be visiting again in the near future. The zero speed limit sign, just what I needed. Barely breaking it, just approaching 46k. Oh, another 150 meters of <laughs> slow walking before I get to that. But I'm approaching it, nevertheless. So I'm in Sutton Scarsdale, the one mile to Heath sign is just around the corner. So I don't get run over. We should be good. There's no footpaths around here. And there it is. The one mile to Heath sign. One of the Heath village. I have to run across the road. That's helped me. Absolutely no problem. Easy this running lock. Heath village one mile. Down the hill, up the hill. Oh, who made my legs so heavy? God. Off we go. I've been trying to get around without getting any nettle stings. It's getting more and more difficult. Bluebell's still looking good though. Tricky decision up here. You can either try and climb over the highest stile in the United Kingdom, as far as I can tell, or you can walk a few metres extra and go around. <laughs> Both sound less than appealing at the moment. That stile just looks ridiculous. I'm in this way. Right, 47.3 kilometers, just about to cross the bridge over the bypass into Heath. Two villages to pass through, <laughs> then we're there. Right, I'm almost seven and a half hours in, 5k to go. Uh, assuming my map matches how far I actually travelled today, 
complete the course. So many hills that you just forget about. <laughs> but yeah, 5k left. Hour and a half to do it, so unless there's a disaster I should get a medal. That's what it's all been about. As well as the uh, the adventure of the day of course. Which has been pretty awesome. Uh, you learn you learn a few things along the way. Uh, yeah. I don't know what brain fog occurs. I think that's one of the things that you learn. <laughs> My legs hurt. <laughs> yeah, that's something I've learnt. How to make your legs hurt. I'm getting quite good at it. They come a natural. Alright, just walking up the hill of doom on the five pitch trail. There's another runner behind me somewhere. And if there's a chance that I'm second from last at the moment, <laughs> that's enough of an incentive to run a bit. It's not up this hill. That's a heart rate alert. Done 49.73 kilometres at this point. About 500 metres to go, I reckon. Not quite sure where the finish line is. Hopefully, it's nice and clear when I get there. Hey, up. Last 200. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You've got to marry someone now, though. Oh, now you tell me. <laughs> I'm the first person you met, Steve. Oh, yeah. that's lucky. <laughs> What's me? Yeah, I knew Steve. <laughs> uh, I'll get you a medal. Uh, you have uh, an apple core, which you can prefer. <laughs> one of those two. Well done. Uh, you uh, right? Oh, thank you. Surprised I made it, but I'm ready for a sit down now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There we go. Thank you so much. Good on you. Very well done. Yeah, Jamie. Thanks, buddy. You're welcome.